Colorful, Captivating Coral Reefs by Doherty Henshaw Patton and illustrated by Kendall Jan Jubb. Coral reefs are among the most beautiful and busiest places on earth. A coral reef is like a big city. Different varieties of coral form the buildings. Colorful fish swim around through the spaces in and, and between the corals and their branches, hiding here, feeding there. Other animals, such as worms, sea urchins, sea stars, shrimps, and crabs, also live on coral reefs. Altogether, almost a quarter of all known species of marine life depend on coral reefs, including 700 kinds of coral and 4,000 species of fish. A coral reef is made up of mostly limestone laid down by tiny invertebrate animals, animals without backbones called polyps. The polyps live together in large groups called colonies. Each polyp is about the size of a pencil eraser and is protected by its own little limestone cup. As the colony grows, the polyps manufacture more limestone and the reef gets bigger. Corals that make reef by laying down limestones are called hard corals. Coral reefs are found in clear tropical seas or nearby, where the water temperature stays above 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Reef building coral thrive only as far below the surface as light can reach. They gradually disappear in water deeper than 100 feet. There's a good reason why reef building corals need sunshine. Each coral polyp has a central mouth surrounded by soft tentacles. When something touches a tentacle, special stinging cells are set off and attack. Hard corals don't need to catch their food, however. They get help from microscopic single-cell algae that live inside them. The algae harvest energy from the sunlight and transfer much of that energy to the coral. Most animals get all their energy from the food they eat, but the corals get up to 90% of their energy from this algae. In turn, the coral provides a safe environment for the algae. Hard corals come in many different shapes. Some, like lobe coral, make large mounds. Others are branched and look like antlers, like the elkhorn coral, or the human fingers, like the finger coral. Hard corals grow at different rates. Lobe coral grows less than an inch a year. Branching coral grows much faster, often more than four inches a year. Unlike reef building corals, Orange cup coral doesn't have algae in its cell, so it must catch its own food. It lives in shaded areas such as in caves and under overhangs. It can also live in waters deeper than 120 feet where there is no light. Other corals, called soft corals, don't live in limestone cups at all. Their colonies are flexible and take on many different shapes. Soft tree coral forms a beautiful big colony that looks like a feathery orange bush. Sea fans and sea wisps are small soft coral that sometimes live on reefs, but they are not reef builders. Reefs come in three main types. Atolls are circular reefs that surround a central lagoon. Atolls are often found far away from the shore. Fringing reefs lie off the shore of islands and along coastlines. The water between a fringing reef and the shore is shallow. Barrier reefs also lie offshore, but the water between them and the shore form a lagoon from a few yards to 100 feet deep. The most famous reef is the Australia Great Barrier Reef. This giant is actually made up of more than 2,800 smaller reefs that stretch along Australia's eastern coast. The Great Barrier Reef is more than 1,200 miles long and is home to 340 kinds of coral and more than 2,200 species of fish. Corals reproduce by releasing their eggs and sperm, called gametes, into the water. This behavior is called spawning. Spawning time depends on water temperature, the tides, and the phases of the moon. When a sperm from a particular species meets up with an egg of the same species, they join to form an embryo. The cell divides many times to form a tiny oval-shaped larva covered with ha tiny hair-like cilia that help it swim. Coral larvae are attracted to light and swim towards the surface of the sea. There they live in the mixture of tiny plants and animals called plankton. Water currents carry the coral larvae away from the reef they came from. Many larvae die, but after a few days to a couple of months, others find a good place to settle and grow into new coral colonies. 
It's not surprising that the reef, with all of its nooks and crannies and branches, is home to many kinds of colorful fish. The brilliant hues serve a number of purposes, from allowing males and females to recognize one another, to providing camouflage among the colorful corals. Bright colors can also be a warning, don't bite me or you'll be sorry. The yellow tang, for example, has razor-sharp white spines by its tail to protect it. After one mistake, a predator knows to avoid this dangerous fish. Color patterns can also confuse predators. It's hard to tell which end is which when the long-nosed butterfly fish swims along the reef. Dark bands across the eye of some species can make their eyes hard to see. Many reef fishes, such as the convict tangs, have bright black and white bands. A predator zeroes in on the pattern. Then the tang flees, its black and white stripes confusing the predator. Fish of all shapes live on the reefs too. Chunky boxfish, so well armored that only their mouth, eyes, and fins can move. Awkwardly po poke around the reef looking for food, long skinny needlefish float just below the water's surface. Many reef fish are disc-shaped. From the side they're round or oval, but from the front or back they're very slim and therefore hard to see. Reef fish range in size from tiny to huge. Many boxfish, blennies, and other species never grow longer than five or six inches, whereas moray eels can reach eight feet in length. Giant potato cod, more than six feet long, weighing 200 pounds, also live along reef. One place they gather is in the deep spot called the cod hole on Australia's giant Great Barrier Reef. Reef fish feed in a variety of ways. Some fish such as a leopard blenny of Hawaii eat the coral itself. Other fish like the thread fin butterfly fish eat a more varied diet that includes sea anemones, worms, and small crustaceans. Parrotfish takes bites from broken off coral, but their food is actually the algae that grows within the coral. They're named for their strong beak-like mouth. They bite off chunks of coral, then grind them using special plates at the back of their throats. Their intestines use the algae and the coral as food, and the ground-up coral comes out in their feces as sand. You can thank parrotfish for much of the sand on the world's beaches. The reef is also home to predators that feed on other animals. The Red Sea lionfish has a striped body and long branch, branching fins. It swims very slowly as it stalks its fishy prey. When it gets close enough, it rushes forward and engulfs the prey in its huge mouth. The octopus is a predator that eats shrimp, crabs, mussels, and clams, but it can also be prey to such fish as moray eels, which hide in reef cavities waiting for a tasty fish or octopus to come close. The octopus can change its color pattern to match the background, making it hard for both prey and predator to see. If an octopus is threatened, it releases a cloud of ink. The ink not only hides the octopus, but can also blind the predator and confuse its sense of smell. Reef fish also eat other foods. Some feed on plankton. Others eat large kinds of algae called seaweed. Damselfish that eat plankton hang out in groups above the reef, picking bits of food from the water. Those that eat seaweed keep to themselves. Each has its own territory along shallow parts of the reef where it feeds and chases away intruders. Reef fish also eats invertebrate animals such as worms and clams. Goatfish are so named because their whisker-like barbells around their mouth resemble the beard of a goat. Goatfish uses the barbells to fill and taste the sandy bottoms of the reef in search of food. Fish and coral are the most obvious reef animals, but coral reefs are home to thousands of other kinds of animals too. Every nook and cranny of the reef is home to such creature as shrimps, crabs, and sea urchins. Sea stars move slowly over the reef on thousands of tiny, sucker-like feet hunting for clams and mussels to eat, while fan worms glue their protective tubes to the reef. They extend their beautiful fans to feed on plankton. If, dangerous, if, da if danger threatens, fan worms can pull back into their tubes with lightning speed. Some fish and shrimps perform a special job on coral reef. They set up cleaning stations. All sorts of reef fish line up at these stations, where the cleaners nip parasites and bits of dead skin from the bodies of the client fish. Cleaners even go right into the mouth of predator like moray eels to clean their teeth. Many unrelated cleaner fish sport bright blue stripes like a uniform that lets other fish know they are cleaners. A special zigzag dance also helps identify them as a friend, not foe. Cleaner wrasses in Hawaii and in the Indian Ocean as well as cleaner neon gobies in the tropical Atlantic all have these dazzling stripes. Sometimes one kind of reef animal uses another as its home. 
One common relationship is between the sea anemones and the anemone fish. Sea anemones are related to coral and live in all the world's ocean. Each anemone looks much like a giant coral polyp, an inch or more in diameter, but without the limestone skeleton. People depend on coral reefs in many ways. Reefs provide barriers against waves, protecting beaches and coastal buildings from dangerous storms. A number of important food fish live on coral reef, and thousands of people around the world catch fish there to sell. Tourists who come to snorkel and dive put millions of dollars into the economy of countries with coral reefs. Reefs can provide important medicine. For example, the AZT, a drug used to treat AIDS, comes from a sponge that lives in the Caribbean reef. Other drugs that are used to treat cancer, like heart disease, and ulcer also comes from the reef. Reefs can benefit people, but those same people can damage reef. 20% of the world's coral reefs have disappeared in the last 20 years or so, mostly because of human activity. Many things can harm reef. The anchors of boats bang into reef, breaking them up. People who visit reefs can damage them by collecting coral souvenirs and by stepping on the coral. Overfishing has reduced the numbers of some species to dangerously low levels. People sometimes use dynamite to stun fish, and the dynamite damages the reef. They may use poison, which kills many fish of many kinds of living creatures. Reef fish are also collected to sell for home aquariums, sometimes in large numbers. In areas where lots of people live, rivers and sewers that empty into the ocean can carry pollution and choking mud onto reef. Changes in the modern world can be a big threat to coral reef. The crowd of thorn sea star, which is as big as a dinner plate, eats living coral. Every 15 to 20 years, the number of these hungry creatures increase and they kill large sections of reef. Some scientists think pollutions of the sea by fertilizing from farms help feed the sea star larvae, increasing the numbers of these killers. Global warming also threatens the world's reef by warming up the ocean. When the water temperature gets too warm, the corals lose the algae that live in their cells. This is called coral bleaching. Often the coral then dies. In 1998, coral bleaching killed huge numbers of corals in the Indian Ocean as well as many along the Great Barrier Reef. Global warming also leads to higher sea levels and more powerful storms, both of which can endanger reefs. People throughout the tropics are trying to save coral reefs. They work at educating tourists so they will respect the reef and treat them with care. They're setting up underwater preserve where fish and other marine life can live and reproduce undisturbed by human activity. Government of some countries are working towards slowing global warming by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases they release into the air. Scientists are studying reef life too. The more we understand about how coral reef plants and animals live, the easier it will be to make good decisions about how to manage reef and preserve them for the future.